Pronghorn antelope is one of the most interesting animals in North America, in part because it's not actually an antelope, it's closely related to goats, but also because it is speedy, like super, super speedy. So speedy that it can easily outrun any predator in North America right now. So why is it so speedy? Well, when we look at some other places like the African savanna, we can see that other animals are approaching the same speeds. This is especially true when you consider things like the springbok, but there's actually only one animal that's faster than the pronghorn, the cheetah. But the thing is, when we're thinking about the pronghorn's speed, there aren't cheetahs in the wilds of North America right now. Or at least, there's not living cheetahs in the wilds of North America right now. Because you can still find fossils of the American cheetah. Morassinonyx lived in North America from about 2.5 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. And it had a lot of adaptations that made people think it was directly related to the modern day cheetah, which is in the genus Asinonyx. And in fact, for a long time, it was placed in that same genus. However, researchers did genetic testing and found that actually it's closer related to a puma, despite the many similarities, again, it shares with a cheetah, such as having a very large nose for better oxygen intake when it was running. Additionally, there's structures in the vertebra that help cheetahs essentially stretch their body out longer so they get more power from each stride and Morassinonyx seems to have had the same structures. Now, the obvious idea about the pronghorn then is that it evolved to be fast because it was running away from these cheetahs. And that could very well be the case, but it's really, really hard to try and prove that. But fortunately, there's some very well-preserved fossils that means we actually can, because these come from Natural Trap Cave, which when you think of a cave going into a cliff face, don't do that. This one is a cave going straight down into the ground. And that means animals could fall inside and get trapped. And then when they died, they'd be less exposed to the elements and better preserved for the fossil record. And there's actually been a lot of fossils of Morassinonyx found in this cave, as well as some large American lions, which are larger than even African lions, wolves, as well as a number of different prey items, notably mountain goats, bison, horses, and of course, pronghorn. And by comparing the different ratios of carbon and nitrogen in these fossils, Researchers can actually say, hey, this is what these animals were eating. And that's because plants do selectively pick different isotopes of carbon and nitrogen. So the different plants have different ratios of those two elements. And then the animals that eat those will also inherit, because you are what you eat, those same ratios of carbon and nitrogen. And then again, once an animal eats those prey items, they also inherit a similar balance of nitrogen and carbon. Because these fossils were so well preserved, Researchers were able to test the collagen inside of the bones and try to understand exactly what the kind of chemical composition of the collagen actually was, specifically its carbon to nitrogen ratios. And what we see in the herbivores should tell us something about what the predators were actually eating. And they did this with all of the predators that have been found in this cave. And they did a lot of statistical tests for this, which are plotted out in these graphs. And in this graph, you can actually see where a lot of the diet of things like the American cheetah is made up of pronghorns in the blue there. And in fact, this is actually easier to see in the table just above this graph in the paper, because the table actually just lists the averages that they found. And the average shows that Morassinonyx would have eaten pronghorn about 40% of the time. Meanwhile, the lions would have eaten it 41% of the time, and the wolves at 38%. However, the wolves do have slightly more horse in their diet than the other animals do. And this isn't entirely unexpected, especially considering their very limited data set for some of these animals, but it does mean that at least Morassinonyx was eating pronghorns a significant amount of the time. It wasn't a specialist by any means. It wasn't only eating the pronghorn, but it was eating them enough that it could potentially act as somewhat of an evolutionary pressure on pronghorn to just get faster. And there are other things that this paper didn't address directly that do need to be addressed at some point. And one of those is just talking about the collagen. They believe the collagen is a good representation of what these organisms were eating at the time they died, or at least the last few years before they died. And that's because collagen is replaced throughout an organism's life. However, it does slow down a lot when these animals reach adulthood. And considering that these animals, at least in the modern day relatives, can live for a while in the wild, it's likely that when they were adults and finally did die, that they had been eating whatever prey items they were feeding on for a good amount of time. That said, the natural trap cave may not be as closed of a system as we generally think it is. So there could have been contamination getting into the collagen and changing its chemical makeup, giving us a skewed result. 
There's also the issue of sample size and some of the samples varying wildly. And a great example of this is in some of the bison, their CN values varied a lot. And that just means some of the bison are eating some plants and some of the bison are eating different plants. Meaning even using the mean, that's not representing the full diversity of what these organisms were eating. And with a limited sample size, we don't know what that average actually is. And if the mean that we got is actually close to that average. Additionally, and the authors do mention this, they assume that the large predators are only eating large herbivores. They ignore smaller herbivores like rabbits, which have also been found in this cave, that also would have made up some of the diets of these larger predators. Because when you become a large predator, you really don't have the freedom to pick and choose what you want to eat. You'd be like, eh, I don't feel like rabbit today. You have such a high energy demand that if there's an opportunity to eat a rabbit, you're gonna do it. And so that's something that should be addressed, although it's gonna take some time to actually do that more so, especially since the main focus of this paper is whether or not morassinonyx actually acted as a pressure on pronghorn evolution. Now, this doesn't mean that it wasn't the pressure that did act on the pronghorn. It just means that it's a bit more complicated than we might think just yet, and we need some other lines of evidence to try and help support this idea or disprove it, depending on what the evidence is. And the fact is, even when they look at their statistical tests with the graph, you can actually see that double peak that is present in the cheetah's graph. And the authors do suggest, hey, maybe this does mean there was a preference for morassinonyx to feed on pronghorn. We're just gonna need more tests to be able to show that. And the fact that the lion's graph doesn't have the same double peak, despite being at a slightly higher percentage of pronghorn in its diet, at least according to the mean test, actually means that there might be one more thing to consider when considering the American lion's diet. And we can see this really clearly when we're looking at modern lions and their behaviors on the African savanna, because they're kind of jerks. They go around and bully the other animals, including cheetahs, off of the prey that they've killed. Meaning that potentially them just scavenging and bullying Miras and Onyx may be part of the reason that there's this kind of enrichment in the pronghorn, despite them being so much slower than the pronghorn. It could be just one part of the factors that led to morassinonyx not being successful later on, that they were just easily bullied off carcasses the same way modern cheetahs are. So while this paper is far from conclusive, it doesn't mean that the American cheetah wasn't the pressure acting on the pronghorn. What it really just means is we need to test more fossils, because maybe if we had some better statistical tests, we could more definitively prove whether or not the American cheetah was the main pressure on the pronghorn. 